Hi everyone, back at it again in Studio C. For those who did not know, I've been out and about. And if you missed yesterday's video, last night I did a video with the Mustang GT500 Shelby Edition. This thing is a B760 horsepower. Check it out. I know a lot of people didn't actually get in there and look at it. And I had a lot of you asking to see it. It's been a year I've been talking about it. I finally got around to doing a video. I did the video in the car, enjoyed it. A little bit different because I did it with my phone, just my phone, a little bit of editing, uh, put it out there and uh, it was different. We'll just say that. So, and you got to see my daughter. I had my daughter in the video as well. You guys got to meet one of the Mo families uh, and it was good. It was good stuff. I appreciate all the nice comments about the car. I will be doing another video in it. We're gonna call it Stocks and Stang. And uh, we'll go that route. We'll see what's up. But it's going to be down the road a little bit. Uh, right now, I'm back in Studio B. You know, that's Studio, somebody said, that's Studio S. Yeah, that's Studio S in this thing. So we got a little bit of that. Now, we'll start by taking a look at yesterday's. You can see the markets right now. And uh, they yesterday, just not bad. I expected a red. And when you see all that green from Tuesday, remember Tuesday, you had Tesla up over 10%. I believe it ended up over 10%, 10 or 11. Neo was up, I think, 9 to 10%. And of course, uh, when you see that kind of gain, you're not expecting to see two days in a row. It just hasn't happened. It's been like a roller coaster. And the, and the overall thought is, where do we go with that roller coaster? Are we going up, you know, down, but we're heading higher? Or are we heading lower? And that's the big talk. So, so today I got a little bit of hopium for you, of course, and I, we'll have some contrarian views as well to bring it all together. And we'll take a look at what's going on. Like I said, we'll, we'll see what's happening. Now you can see what happened yesterday. And I'm hoping to see a little bit of green today for NEO. My NEO stock price prediction of $30 or more by the end of this year with all the things going on. I think that would be a good solid price. And then hopefully, hopefully we can see a 100% return from 30 to 60 by the end of 2023. Remember, we were down at $12 just a little bit ago. NEO is now up to 22. For those who have been riding along, you're up $10 a share, which we're closing in on the 100% mark from that bottom. We get up to around 24, 25, we'll hit that. Uh, very, very close, uh, about 10% away. So I'd love to see that happen here. But more importantly, I think we'll see 30 by the end of this year. I'm not alone in this, and that's what we're talking about. Uh, so now, uh, as we get into it, just before we get into that next article, make sure you get your 10 free stocks below from Moomoo. Put, deposit one penny, get six free stocks worth up to $15,000. The luck is on your side. Anybody 18 or older in the house, use my link down below. Put 100 in or more, you'll get seven free stocks worth up to $17,500. Plus, you get a guaranteed free share of Lucid. And that is the best opportunity. Make sure you vote for me, too, in that Moo Moo contest in the description. And, of course, the Weeble, one penny, six free stocks. Do that for both Moo Moo and Weeble. You will get 12 free stocks for two cents. Definitely take advantage of it. Now, as we look, check this out. Veterans uh, strategist is betting the market will avoid a recession. And he's not alone. There is a couple big wigs out there that do believe we will avoid a recession. Now, I, I do not believe we'll re, uh, avoid a recession for 2023. I think there's a, a good chance that uh, we will see a recession. And I, I've been saying that for a long time, that it would be the second half of 2023. I still believe that I could change my mind, of course, just like a lot of these analysts on all these stocks. But at this time, I still believe we'll see a slight mild recession, two quarters, possibly three. But it's not even going to be that deep. It's not, it's gonna, it could be a shallow one but it could last two to three quarters. Of course, it has to last two quarters. That's what a recession does. Uh, and, and this is what, though, check this out. Rallying a whopping 40%. I hope he is right. Who is this gentleman we're talking about? Uh, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer uh, and company, chief investment strategist. Uh, there you go. And if he's right, we got some big things here. I may not, uh, we got his, his original forecast. He's sticking to that with the market, not only avoiding recession, rising 40% from where it currently stands. And that would make the S&P 500 end at 5330. Now I gotta tell you, and that's by the end of this year. I, I think a lot of people agree that we could easily see a nice run moving into that Q, middle of Q3 up to finish the year. A lot of people think in Q4 could be a solid 
solid uh, quarter. Multiple reasons why. One, remember history is on our side when it comes to these rates, the, these inflation just blowing up. Rates are going through the roof, I should say, the inflation rates. And if we look at inflation and think to ourselves, would when could inflation top out? When could inflation finally hit the peak and we start coming down? And that could be June. June could be the top. Maybe we go up a little bit. Maybe that's it then. And then we come down in July, August, September. You're seeing oil prices come down a little bit right now. Remember, they're up at 120s. Now they're back down to 10s, and that's affecting some of the oil stocks we have. And then, of course, uh, from there, if oil continues to drop, that's going to drop the cost of a lot of things. You could see inflation peaking possibly in May, possibly June. And June could be a good guess for that. And then you move down from July, August, September. So if we do peak in June or July, maybe even August, say August, all right, that's still Q3. Q3 is July, August, September. Uh, and so just say we peak in, in, say, we'll say June or July. And if we do, history says that over the next 12 months, on average, for similar situations of inflation and the Fed doing its thing and everything else, we average 13.2% gain in the markets over the next 12 months, easily outperforming the long-term average of the markets in general. In other words, we should be able to do very well. Doesn't mean the volatility is going away, just like all those other periods. I'm sure it was a massive amount of volatility. But overall, in the next 12 months, we can expect to make 13.2%. That's a big thing to remember. Remember that. History is on our side for this. I'm not trying to bet against history. And especially with the fear gauge going through the roof right now, and everybody's afraid to pull the money out. Everybody's just, they're shocked. They, they don't know what to do. And so they just want to get their money out. That tells me it's the perfect time to be buying. Just like when you see everybody out there trying to buy every stock they can. They're in, everybody's buying altcoins, every coin. I don't care what coin comes out we're buying. That is the time to probably sell out, get out, sit on the sidelines and wait, or rotate into some safer plays, uh, more fundamentally based and go that route. So definitely some things to think about there. Now, what do we got here? Now, I gave you the hopium there. 40, you know, the market could go up to 5,300. I think 47 to 4,900 at this point could be a good range. But here you go. There's a 75% chance the Fed triggers a U.S. recession within two years, which could cost Biden re-election new study. Shows, of course, if you have a president out there and the markets are doing horrible and they're up for a re-election, and people are paying monster amounts of money. They're in recession. People are losing their jobs. You don't expect that president to get reelected at all. And a lot of the people in um, government in general, usually it goes against the party in power. And so whoever the president's po power is, the power, you know, Democrats, Republicans, it usually goes against that if we're in recession, because obviously they would say, hey, you were running the country. You couldn't get it done. We're going to go another direction. And that's usually what happens. So We'll see how that ends up. You know, November is going to be big. November, we got the midterms, and that's in the middle of Q4. And I've said it before, a mixed uh, controlling. We'll say one party controls something, House, the Senate, or the presidency, and the other party controls the other thing. On average, once again, not fighting against history, has given us the best results in the market compared to either party control having total control. Having total control is never better than having uh, a mixed a mixed government because a mixed government has to work together. They have to get through their dysfunctional times and make things work that is best for the overall. And so sometimes that's a better thing. But the market, the market, as always, uh, like I said, when you look at the long term averages, has done better. It has done better as a mix. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see here. Pre markets right now. Just to share this up, let's pull up the pre markets. I know some people watching this. And we can see where it is, 0.3, down a little bit red right now at the time of making this. We'll see how it opens out tomorrow. Oil, though, check out the oil, down to 103. Remember, I wasn't going to panic or worry or anything until uh, WTI dropped under 100. We're getting close. I might need to make some moves. i got to see. You know, Biden has that trip going over to Saudi Arabia, and that's going to be big because he's going to try to, uh, uh, whatever he's going to do, obviously, he's trying to get more oil put out there to help drop the prices. And if he does that and oil prices drop even more, and this could be a prelude to that, in my opinion, we'll see. Plus, if we're getting close to recession, oil demand drops. People, you already know a lot of companies out there are increasing their oil. We've seen this back in 2007 to 2009. They started 
just putting all the oil they could out when it was up $150 a barrel. And then all of a sudden, a major recession hits and that supply was going through the roof and demand collapsed. We've seen oil go all the way down to 30 something cent or 30 something dollars a barrel. Gas got down real cheap, real cheap, dirt cheap. And so this is reminding me much of that. I'm not going to lie to you. I still think oil is going to spike back up, but we will see because we do avoid a recession. Demand's going to stay very, very high. The whole Russia thing with the uh, the Western countries is still playing havoc. There's still some issues they're going to face moving forward. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. And then Michael Berry, if you haven't seen this, remember he's the one back in the day with the whole uh, the uh, whole real estate back 2007, 2009. He got famous for that. The big short, they made a movie about him. He's not out of this. People always think, what's he do? Right here you go. He, he, bit, he bet big on Alphabet, which is Google. And Meta, and if you're wondering what he's buying, there you go, a little bit of that. Uh, Booking.com, second largest holding, and he bought more of that. But here you go, tech stocks this quarter, but he uh, shorted, shorted right here, Apple back in Q1. I don't know if he still is, but that was huge. And of course, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is another one, third biggest holding there. He owns 750,000 shares. If you're wondering um, what he is investing in, this is one, and check it out. And the conglomerate holds rights to iconic characters, Batman, sports channels, HBO Europe, and sports channels in Europe, and then HBO and CNN. Uh, stock's down 44%, but he sees a value in that. So pay attention to that. And of course, Ethereum right now above 1,000. We are out there around 1080, 1079. We'll see how that ends. And then for those wondering about the portfolio quickly, and we can see VOO, we bought that. Uh, we bought that this week. We're up four cents, barely green. And of course, we're taking a hit right now. And you can see can, this is the 11.93 is the overall VOO, and then 13% for the conservative. That's because some of our oil stocks are getting hammered right now. Aggressive portfolio, 24.97 was down 30 something, so we're coming back. I ended up adding charge point to that one down a little bit. We'll see how it does. Crypto, like I said, we ended up Ethereum, 11.67 down seven dollars, seven percent. Everything for Ethereum is just looking ugly. So if you haven't done it, make sure you get those Moo Moo stocks down below. One penny gets you six free stocks worth up to 15 grand, 100 bucks or more. Gets you seven free stocks plus an eight stocks of guaranteed Lucid, which is awesome. And then we will get you one penny. We'll get you six free stocks. And so if you put two cents in, one here at Weeble, one at Moo Moo, you'll get 12 free stocks guaranteed. Do it. It's awesome. That's anybody in the house 18 or older. Hit the uh, vote thing for me then for Moo Moo down below. You vote three times when you get to mine. And you can do that every single day to help me out. Then, of course, uh, we got the Patreon link down there as well. Take advantage of that. And uh, come on over and join me, support the channel. And we have the private Discord for members. And you can see the portfolios. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.